Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. Come on now, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you know that he's an awesome God, he's the God that woke you up this morning, started you on your way, come on, did something for you that you didn't deserve, gave you another day, and you're excited about it, then come on and give him some glory in his house this morning. For truly all of the glory is due him. Amen. I'm so excited about being here at First Baptist. You may take your seat. It's just such a pleasure and an honor to be here this weekend and fellowshipping. I have just been truly, truly blessed by this experience. I want to first give honor to your pastor, uh, Dr. Williams. Where did he get off to? Amen. Dr. Williams, come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the shepherd of this branch of Zion. He's an awesome God. She's okay. Amen. Amen. Bless God. He, we thank God for, for the shepherd of this branch of Zion. I'm so grateful to his uh, beautiful wife, the one that stands by him and undergirds him, uh, Reverend Williams, the first lady of this branch of Zion. Amen. Amen. I want to give thanks to all of my sisters, and I'm just so grateful for them. I'm so grateful for their loving and kind spirit. I'm so thankful for the, how they've held me up this weekend. I have to admit, I haven't been feeling that well this morning, and they've just laid hands on me, and they've prayed over me in Jesus' name, and I'm feeling already much better. Amen. Amen. Amen to Evangelist Hyman, to Reverend Smith, to uh, uh, Evangelist Davis, to Minister Carter. I'm just so grateful to all of you all and to all of you, my father's children. Amen. It's just good. It's real good. No, it's real, real good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. We're going to jump right into the word as I desire not to labor uh, before you long. Um, my mother threatened me, uh, which she often does sometimes, and she said, when you get up there today, you better sing. Now, that came from mama, right? <laughs> and I've learned even after all these years that it's important to be obedient. Amen. So if you all pray for me, I'm just going to try and lift up one verse of this song um, as we go on and press on in the word. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When this old world tossing me like a sheep on the raging sea. Thou who rulest the winds and the waters, stand by me. In the midst of my faults and my failures, stand by me. In the midst of my faults and failures, stand by me. When I've done the best that I can, and my friends misunderstand, thou who knows all about me, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When my life becomes a burden and I'm nearing the chilly church, 
good on all the lily of the valley stand by me stand by me lord stand by me stand by me scripture found in the book of Ruth. The book of Ruth, the first chapter. When you have it, let it be known by saying amen. amen. Anybody need some more time, say wait a minute. If you don't have your Bibles, just say go on without me, go on without me. Amen, amen. Amen. Ruth, the first chapter, beginning at verse 16. And it reads, Amen. Amen. Those who are able, as it is the custom of this house, those who are able, if you would please stand for the reading of God's word. And it reads, but Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. Let us pray. Father God, we love you, we praise you, we honor you, and we adore you. You are such an awesome God, a God of might and a God of miracles, and you're worthy of all of the praise and all of the honor. Oh, God, I ask that you would just hide me behind the old rugged cross. Anoint me afresh and anew, oh, God. Bless me right now, and then use me to your glory. God, I'll be so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for all of the praise and all of the honor is due you. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I am so grateful to have my church family with me on today. I have um, my, my birth mother, the one who, who gave me life, Sister Sarah Rice, and I'm just so grateful that she's with us on today. And then I have my, my spiritual mother and the one who just blesses me and mentors me and talks to me and, and keeps me straight. I have two of my besties, my best friend, and I have my best, my other best friend who is the, be the greatest niece in the whole wide world. She's my ride or die, and I love her dearly, and I'm so glad that they're here with us on today. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, thank God for the health and strength of Deaconess Washington. I would ask that we would continue to be in prayer with her on today. Amen. 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 Verse 
verse 18, when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. And for the time that has been allotted for preaching, I would like for us to consider the theme, we're in this together. We're in this together. Amen. A mouse looked through the crack of the wall to see a farmer and his wife opening up a package. Oh, the mouse peered on with excitement, wondering what food might be contained therein that he may be able to partake of. To his dismay, however, he was devastated to find out that it wasn't food in the package at all, but rather it was a mouse trap. Retreating to the farmyard, the mouse shouted out the warning. There's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap in the house. The chicken clucked, scratched, raised her head and said, Mr. Mouse, I can tell this is of grave concern to you, but it is of no consequence to me. I can't be bothered. Oh, the little mouse trucked on and turned to the pig and told the pig, there's a mouse trap in the house. The pig said, I'm sorry, Mr. Mouse. I, I sympathize with you, but there's nothing I can do but pray for you. Be assured you're in my prayers. The mouse turned to the cow and said, there's a mouse trap in the house. The cow moved and said, Mr. Mouse, I'm sorry for you, but it ain't no skin off my nose. So the mouse returned to the house, her head hung down, and dejected to face the farmer's mouse trap alone. That very same night, the sound came from the, the house. He heard throughout it the sound of a mouse trap catching its prey. The farmer's wife rushed to see what was caught. In the darkness, she did not see that it was a venomous snake whose tail the trap had caught. As she reached towards the trap to check it, the snake bit her. The farmer rushed her to the hospital. She was treated and eventually sent home, but she had a fever. And everyone knows that you treat a fever with fresh chicken soup. So the farmer took his hatchet to the farmyard for the soup's main ingredient. His wife's sickness uh, continued, so friends and neighbors came to sit with her around the clock to feed them. The farmer had to slaughter the cow. Sadly to say, she didn't get well, but rather she died. There was a funeral. And of course, there was a repast. And in order to supply the ham for the repast, he had to butcher the pig. And it's like the pig and the cow and the chicken. It is so often that we, when we witness others face problems, and when we see others face issues and the vicissitudes of life, that we tend to think that it does not concern us. But this little story is tailored to teach us that when the least of us is threatened, we are all at risk. We are all involved together in this journey called life. We must all keep an eye out for one another and be willing to be there for each other, to encourage one another. Why? because we're in this together. In her book entitled The Friendship Crises, Finding, Making, and Keeping Friends When You're Not a Kid Anymore, Marla Paul discussed the innocence in which relationships of children are birthed and cultivated. She